G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here and uh, it's finger time, just taking the bandage off, day 25, let's do the dressing. Sitting up on the veranda this time, Radio Nationals the world today, playing in the background and uh, we'll see what we got. Yeah that's probably the best angle to show how the Telfer and Betadine turns itself into a splint. which peels off quite neatly and goes straight into the rubbish bucket not the bag and here we have the fingertip which does in fact seem to be recovering I reckon where does it look in the bright light Yeah, not perfectly beautifully pretty, but it's coming good. Into the hot salty water. For those of you who haven't seen the previous movies, the theory is that the hot water acts as a vasodilator to increase the blood circulation <coughs> in the injured finger. That means you get more white blood cells going in there to clean up any dead tissue and get rid of any in incipient bacteria. You also get more red blood cells going in there with more oxygen. So vasodilation is a good thing as long as you haven't got it big freshly damaged artery and the salt means there's a osmotic pressure gradient which takes fluid out of the damaged finger and into the salty water so any fluid in the interstitial spaces which would probably be white cells that have eaten too many bacteria and burst they get drawn out as the uh, osmotic pressure gradient means that the fluid between the cells attempts to dilute the salty water. So hot salty water is pretty much the ultimate disinfectant, antiseptic, antibacterial healing promoter. And I'm strongly leaning towards the theory that the reason this is doing as well as it is is because I did not attempt to debride physically with scissors any of the tissue that I knew was dead. Um, at the time it was because I couldn't figure out any clear way of determining what was dead until it started to go rotten. And in hindsight, it seems to me that uh, in much the same way as experimental surgeons are trying to grow new organs on the connective tissue scaffold which has had old muscle cells and liver cells whatever it is kidney cells whatever they're trying to grow removed from it in this case I'm asking my finger to basically <coughs> construct a new finger in the remains of the old which was crushed and torn to the point where it should have been amputated because it didn't have any blood supply. And by leaving the dead tissue there, I'm giving my immune system the job of phagocytosing it or removing it, getting rid of the dead flesh. But it's got the scaffold and the template in order to rebuild something new in its place. And it seems to be working pretty well. If you want a real fright, go back and have a look at the wound dressing on injury day plus eight. And you'll see that there was an enormous amount of dead skin, which has sloughed off and been replaced by new skin. Um, if you have a look at this, the injury actually started around here where my thumb is touching it. This has all healed more or less by first intent. This part, yeah, there was enough dead tissue in there, maybe an eighth of an inch across in a wedge. 
that it's having to slough off and come off. But uh, all that white stuff on top of the pink stuff, that's new skin growing back in place. This end of the bruise up here, that was the fold line. And the entire fingertip was more or less pulled off the end. I, I clearly remember looking up into the wound and before it filled with blood I could see the bottom of the fingernail and a bit of the bone. Um, your classic avulsion wound, you know, a degloving wound but it got crushed all the way back up to here before the skin tore. So it's a, it's a maceration avulsion. And technically, theoretically, you're supposed to just cut them off. So I'm feeling particularly pleased with myself that it's 25 days later and I think I've got better than 95% chance of the finger healing. Well, I may be wrong, the end of it may go black tomorrow and drop off the day after, but at the moment things are looking pretty good. So, I may be a hillbilly, but I ain't silly, at least not as silly as I look. I'm just barely bright enough to know how to keep my finger clean, so that if it knows how to rebuild itself, it's got a fair chance at doing it. And that's pretty much the essence of your radical conservative nursing treatment for maceration of ulcing wounds. Just keep it clean. Do everything you can to enhance its ability to heal and don't fiddle with it. Going in there with scissors and scrubbing brush and trying to remove all the dead tissue, I don't think that would have been a good idea at all. Deciding that it's a hopeless case and chopping it off, I don't think that would have been a good idea at all. But um, there's an enormous social pressure on people who have injured themselves to go and let a doctor look at it. believe how many comments I got instructing me to take it to a doctor. It was like, if you don't take it to a doctor, you're going to die because that's what doctors do. They save you know, people from dying because they've hurt their finger. A um, bit of a shout out to Foolish Productions. I'd like you to know, old mate, that uh, you looking at this wound on YouTube is the closest it has actually been being observed and commented on by a doctor. And uh, isn't it remarkable what you can do with nursing? the nursing process. The scientific method of problem solving, the serial number filed off and given a new coat of paint by radical nursing instructors in the 1970s. Ciao!